Welcome back guys to Matt's DIY, a uh, bit of a different video today, as you can see I am not in a shed, that's because my shed has been demolished and I'm building a new workshop. Today I'm in the spare room of my house and I'm going to be showing you how I smooth out PLA for things like Iron Man helmets and other 3D printed projects. Just a really quick reminder at the start of this video, I'm still sponsored by Lumberjack Tools. There's the website there and the code at the bottom of the screen. Use that to get 5% off their entire store. That ends in March, so get in quick. So I just wanted to do a quick overview of what I do so that if people sort of have a general bearing on what they're doing, they don't have to sit through the whole video. But the general premise is, is that I used 120 grit-ish sandpaper. I used an orbital palm sander for this because it was quite big, but for some smaller bits, I will use hand sanding. Um, I hit it with 120 and then I get some wet and dry 240 and just take the edge off uh, where it's picked up a little bit uh, and that helps when you're putting a primer on and stuff. I then use a uh, surface primer from Rust-Oleum, I just like grey, uh, that just shows you where you've missed some sanding and where you could do some more. Uh, once I've done that I'll give that a quick rough up with some 240 or 400 again and then I'll use some of this spray putty. Um, this Simply Spray spray putty is about £4 on Amazon. So I'll leave a link to the des uh, in the description down to this. This stuff is really good. Uh, it outperformed a lot of other filler primers that I've seen and used. Uh, so you want to do this in some very thin coats. Don't build it up too much because you just get blotches and it really stands out. And then you've got to sand it down again. Uh, and then for the deeper cracks and layer lines, and as you can see on this, I've got some holes where I've dropped it and had to fill it and stuff like that. I use this Bondo Glazing Spray uh, Spot Putty. Now this is quite hard to get hold of in the UK. I could only find about one website that set, that was selling it for like a decent price. Um, this is really good. You just got to be careful. Make sure you're wearing a mask. Uh, it is sandable, so it sounds really well. Uh, you just want to take it straight off, and it will leave what it's filled. Uh, just be really careful using this ventilated room mask. Really important with this stuff as well. Uh, this is really bad for you if it gets in your lungs. So that, that's just a general overview. You can take that if you know what you're doing. Just go out and do it. But if you want to stay and watch, the next part will be me taking these little prints. And I'm just going to do one of them and take it from this to pretty much finished like this. So I've got some sandpaper scraps and a piece of unsanded uh, 3D print. I see a lot of people throwing away bits of sandpaper that have hardly been used. So even bits like that looks like it's done, it's not, it will sand. Especially bits like this, people use a sand, piece of sandpaper once and I see them chuck it away and it's just wasteful. Keep them in a little box, you never know what you might need just to get down in somewhere, uh, you know, just there's just like loads of grits in there so pretty simple I just take my 120 you can even go lower at 80 this is just what I've got and you just want to sand and just go around the print and you'll start to see this sort of white color so on black it's really easy to see on other colors like red it should just go a little bit lighter than the colour you've got. So just go around till it's a consistent colour all the way around. And you've got, you know, sometimes the layer lines are too deep. But uh, you just want to get it sort of this colour. Now with things big like the Iron Man helmet, I'll use a power sander. If you do, make sure you wear a mask. With a hand sanding, you're a bit safer, so you don't have to worry. But if you are power sanding, make sure you don't sit in the same spot too long. Uh, I use an orbital sander. So belt sanders and things like that aren't great for this. But if you sit in the same place too long, the plastic will heat up and melt. And, uh, and that will ruin a print. So just take it slow, take it easy, make sure you're moving consistently. So what you should end up with, and this is one I prepared earlier, is something like this. So uh, after the 120 and you've got it down to sort of this colour, just take some 240 and just take the top off of all the layers. Uh, it's not that important that part, I just like to do it to smooth it out. And the main thing I want to show you here is that on this, my nail really grabs into the layer lines. 
So you should you should be able to hear that. On this one, it's a very different sound and a very different texture or, or, or feel under my nail as well. So I can't actually pick up any layer lines on this. And, and as you can see, you can still see some. There's still a few little bits that are too deep for me to sand and uh, I would end up taking out some of the shape if I sanded too much. So I leave them and it will be filled with some of this spray putty. So what I'm gonna do is take you outside and spray putty this and it takes about 20 minutes to dry. And then we'll come in and see how that ends up and I'll show you how, just how smooth it can be. I just wanted to note that on small parts like this, I sometimes don't use the surface primer straight away. I typically do on the big prints just because it helps me see where I haven't sanded enough. But on this, I can see quite clearly because it's quite small and I can feel uh, a big area of it uh, just with my thumb. Uh, you don't need to surface prime straight away, you can jump to the spray putty, but I would recommend if you're doing a big print like the Iron Man helmet, it's just to give it a very thin coat of spray primer, and it, and it just shows where it's standing up too much, but on this, it's, it's just really not going to make that much difference, so I'm going to jump straight to the spray putty. Uh, just at the start of the cliff, I want to say that I've got my printer going, let me just show you that. Uh, so that's what the fan noise is, I'm really sorry about that. But uh, this clip's going to be really quick. I don't know how well you can see this. See, So this is after three coats of filler. Light coats. And you can see it's smoothed out quite a lot of it. But when it does focus, I've still got some pretty deep layer lines. So I could carry on spraying it. But I want to be a bit quicker. So what I'm going to do is take some of this Bondo. And I'm just going to smear it on the deepest, deepest grooves. And then I'll sand it back down till it's all gone. And then all I should be left with is filled in layer lines. And that just makes it a lot quicker and saves you wasting a lot of the putty. So I'm going to do that. Please, when you do that, wear a mask if you're going to do that. I will be wearing a mask. And I'll just show you me smearing it on. So... Really all you want to do is get like the deep layer lines. Uh, I actually ended up covering most of this, but it doesn't have to be complete coverage. It's just what is on your print, you know, uh, like, like with this Iron Man helmet. Uh, I had a particular amount, let's see, right here, like quite a lot here, because I had a crack, um, but not so much on this forehead bit, because that was quite good with the putty. So. You know, you don't have to go all out and you don't have to be reserved because it's all going to get sanded. It just, if you do too much where it's not needed, you end up sanding away a lot of it and it's just a waste. You use too little and you have to do it again. So it's about practicing, doing it yourself and finding a good medium. So like here, that bit is really smooth. That's going to get sanded. But down the bottom here, there's a lot of layer lines. So it's just about finding out what works for you, I guess. So I've let the... Uh, Bondo dry. I've got my 3D printer going again, so that is that noise. Um, but as you can see, it, it doesn't look the best. It's a little bit cracked, and that's just you know it's a thick layer of Bondo, and it's about heat and stuff like that. But all I'm going to do is take some. Uh, you can use 240, but I'm actually going to look for a bit of 400 here. This has been used, but that's fine. Uh, and I'm just going to take down literally. Just going to take the bondo off now. I might swap down to that bit of 240 actually. And this is all you want to do you just want to go around and you just want to start taking it back down to the spray filler. So, I don't know if you can see there. Let me look through the camera. So, you see there, what I'm left with is I'm back down to my filler. Let me focus that. I'm back down to my filler, and you can see that layer line that it was supposed to uh, fill in. So, literally just going to do that across the whole thing, and then I'll come back once it's done and show you a clip. Hopefully, you can see this well, but pretty much all the Bondo is gone, and I, you can't really see it that well, but it has filled in some bits, but 
it's actually a really good example of I put too much Bondo on. So you really don't need to over apply. I, I over applied because I thought, yeah, it will just save me having to do it again. But uh, and it doesn't really matter on small bits like this because it's easy to sand. But I really didn't need to. So, you know, these spots down the bottom, yes, they needed it if it would like to focus for me. It's struggling because of the colour, I think. Bits like that. But if you use that spray putty and give it two, two really good layers, then sand it and then hit it again you'll mainly get a smooth surface, um, which is what I should have shown you, but I went down this route because it was quite small and diddy and I didn't have much spray putty left. But that's another way to do it, but if you want to slap some Bondo on it and spend your time cleaning it up, do it that way. But uh, this is pretty much smooth now, like, you know, no lines at all, so I can hit that with some higher grit sandpaper now, uh, some 400, then some 600, maybe some 1200, like just completely smooth it out and then hit it with some primer really quick. So this is going to be a really weird clip because I'm in my porch because it's actually dark outside um, and I'm freehanding this. But I've just slapped on one very thin layer of primer uh, and then we should be good to go. So I'll just check it afterwards for layer lines and things like that and imperfections. But after that, you should be able to uh, just slap some paint on. So... I primed it, left it overnight, and it's turned out a really nice print. I've actually gone and bondoed this bit because I realised that would be exposed. But um, you could hit it with another layer of primer, but I don't know if you can see there. Probably can't see it that well, but it's really smooth. Can't see any layer lines at all. So I hope this uh, helped at least one person. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, next step, if you're doing this, is just to whack your paint on and, yeah, go from there. So... Leave a like down below, comment any questions you've got. This is just my way of doing it, so there are lots of different ways. You might have a different one, let me know. If you've got any questions about my way of doing it, stick them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Hit the subscribe button, and I just want to mention before I go that I'm still sponsored by Lumberjack Tools. So I'll put the uh, website link up the top and the code down the bottom. Use that for 5% off all their tools. I think that's the 1st of March. So yeah, head over there, they've got some great tools and it supports me too.